Hi, and welcome to this uh, calm, almost a cross between restorative and yin type of practice. And what the purpose of our practice today is really about uh, calming the nervous system. Um, it's great that we do our more physical practices to help us uh, learn how to overcome challenges in the small space of our yoga mats and to keep up our strength. Um, but it's also really important, especially right now, for us to do practices that help us to calm the nervous system, which is what we're going to do today. So as we move through these different asanas that we're going to do or positions with our body, uh, we're actually not doing any standing poses today. And um, think about only moving into 60% of whatever your body is capable of doing as we move through this. Um, we want to create some mild to moderate stimulation, but nothing intense because this is all about calming the nervous system, not stimulating the nervous system. So what you're gonna need is at least one blanket. I've got a blanket here that I have rolled up. Um, if you have your own bolster, even better. Uh, whatever I'm using the blanket for, you can use a bolster. If you have a block, you can also have a block handy too. But a lot of you don't have either of those things, so everything that I'm doing today, I'm gonna to use a, uh, a rolled up blanket or um, or some or a folded blanket so have a blanket handy and as soon as you've got that we're going to place our blanket lengthwise on the yoga mat and we're going to lie down with this rolled up blanket right under our spine so if you have a bolster you can do this with your bolster and if you have a block you can also make a ramp with your bolster by placing a block under here um, so what we want to do is allow the heart center to and the shoulders to open. So I'm going to have my um, my bolster <laughs> just kind of starting kind of just where the ribs of my spine start and just lie back allowing my head to be on my rolled up blanket, my arms up to the side. Now your options here are, you can see I have my knees bent, my feet slightly apart so that my knees are supporting one another. You can also bring your feet together and allow the knees to open up in Supta Baddha Kanasana if that's comfortable for you. Or you could also put blocks or a couple more um, rolled up blankets or pillows under your knees. And then your final, your third option is just to straighten your legs into Shavasana, letting your feet be uh, at least hip width and just drop open. So once you find whatever uh, positioning of your props and of your legs is most comfortable for you, close your eyes and begin to bring awareness to your breath, allowing the belly to rise and fall with each inhale and exhale. And beginning to drop into this space, dropping into this space of relaxation, of letting go, and allowing the body to sink into the support, and creating a sense of the front of the shoulders being heavy, and allowing them to drop back. Deep breaths into the belly and also into the chest. Slow exhales to begin to slow down that stress response in the body. Slowing down and extending the exhales to begin to calm the nervous system. Letting go of those swirling thoughts spinning around in your head. Just letting yourself come to just this moment, to this space, 
to this time, to this breath. Take a few more breaths here. Allowing and unwinding and letting go. Nowhere to be. Bring your awareness to your hip flexors as you continue with your deepening breath and begin to allow a softening, a releasing of those hip flexors. Sometimes just bringing awareness there can help that softening process begin. Begin drawing the breath down into the low abdomen. We're simply going to bend our knees if your legs are straight, or bring your knees together if your knees are parted. So soles and feet are on the floor. We're going to roll over to your side into fetal position. Use your bottom arm to support your head and just pause here for a moment. A couple of deep breaths here. No hurry to get anywhere. And then we're going to move our blanket, our prop, out of the way. Keep it handy because we will use it a little bit later. Extend both arms straight out and stack your palms. And this is actually a good place to put your, your prop, your pillow, your bolster, your block underneath your head so that you're not straining your neck. And then as we inhale, we're going to simply open up into a twist. Don't worry if your hand doesn't come all the way down or if your shoulder doesn't come all the way down. Take a deep inhale here, and then as we exhale, let's come back. Let your head roll on your prop as we move in and out. Let's take another big inhale and open up. And let's just pause here for a moment. Take a full round of breath here. Expanding, relaxing, releasing. And take one more inhale. Use your exhale to come back. We're going to do one more like that. Inhaling, we open up. Let your head roll. Stay here for a full inhale and a full exhale. Taking one more inhale and we exhale. Roll back to our starting position. So we're going to switch sides now. So you can just roll onto your back and roll to your other side. I'm actually going to change ends on my back so that you can still hear me, so I'm not facing my back to you. And then again, stack your palms in front of you. Knees are stacked, head resting on your prop. As you inhale, the top arm lifts and opens up into a spinal twist. Letting your head roll along with your upper body. And your next exhale, we come back to our starting position, letting the head roll. Let's continue two more breaths like that. Inhale, we open, the head rolls to look towards your hand. Stay here for a nice deep inhale. And exhale. Stay for one more inhale. 
The exhale brings us back to our starting position. Last round. Inhale, opening up the head rolls, looking towards our hand, staying here for a full inhale and exhale. Taking one more inhale, and the exhale, and come back to our starting position. Now from here, we're just going to press into the floor and come onto your elbow. And you can use a prop underneath you. Uh, if you have a bolster, you can use a bolster underneath here as well. And we're going to um, bring our bottom leg so that it's straightening the hip crease. And then extending the top leg straight out in front of you. So we're kind of scissored here. So normally, whenever we're doing any of our active yoga poses, I always ask you to be lifted out of your shoulder. Here, we're actually going to sink into the shoulder and allow an opening of the side body here. So your top hand can just rest on your leg. And don't worry how high your leg is. Just be comfortable. Remember, we're looking for only 60% of your stretching capability here. So your hand can rest here, or you can bring it out behind you for a little more opening. Release your neck. And breathe into this side body on the bottom here. A couple more breaths, releasing all that tension in the side body. I can actually really just feel like a rubber band opening on my side body right now. And then if your hand's behind you, bring it in front of you. We're going to slide that bottom arm, the right arm out, then come all the way down into a twist. So this might be what your twist looks like. You might look towards your hand. Some of you might even bring your hand to your foot, but don't make that a goal. It's just an option. Remember, we're not trying to push anything. We're just softening down. So take it to a place where you can be comfortable. And I've got my rolled up blanket under my head. You could have your prop there too. And allow that opening of that left shoulder here, the front of the left shoulder getting heavy. You might be feeling a little bit of opening in that top hip. Nice deep breaths here. And bring that left arm over and across. Release your leg into fetal position. We're going to make our way to our other side. So you can just roll onto your back to your left side if you wish. Again, I'm going to switch ends so that my voice is towards the computer rather than towards the wall behind me. So again, you can have your prop, take your prop with you. And we're going to start with the bottom leg uh, flush and then extending the top leg straight out in front of us. So rather than staying lifted, we're going to allow that sinking to begin to stretch the fascia and the connective tissue here on our side body. So top, that actually feels really good. That top arm can just rest on your leg. Some of you might want to take that top arm behind you to support you back here. But the stretch we're looking for is really the side body all along the ribs, the intercostals. And also, depending how tight you are in your hips, you might feel a little opening here. And the more you send this back knee back behind you, for me anyway, the more I feel a stretch here because it's all connected. Our fashion lines are all connected. So breathing deep here. Few more breaths. And 
just feel everything opening here. Bring your right arm, your top arm in front of you. We're going to go ahead and release down, letting your head come to your prop of block, roll blanket or bolster. Extending that left arm, we're going to release the right arm over and across as we come into a twist. Again, same option. You might bring your left hand to your toes. Again, that doesn't need to be a goal. Just let it be whatever it, whatever it is for you. A few deep breaths here. We're slowly going to bring that right hand over, release that top leg, and come into fetal position. From here, we're going to roll into our bellies and come into sphinx pose. I don't think we need our prop here. So I just want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So sphinx pose, elbows under shoulders or slightly ahead of your shoulders. And just lengthening through the spine so we're not compressing the low back, but we're actually lengthening and making space between each vertebra. And then we're going to come into another little shoulder stretch here. We're working a lot with shoulders. I'm going to extend my left arm straight out beside me. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to bend my right knee. So starting here, and just see what that feels like for you. So this can be a gentle release right here in our hip flexors. Your right arm just resting in cactus arms here. Let's have a couple deep belly breaths before we take the next step. And now we're going to begin to roll towards our left side. Opening up. So how far you go is going to depend on how tight you are in that front chest. So you might just be right here. Some of you might actually bring that top leg to step behind you. So this is a big opening for the, for the front of that shoulder. So again, we're looking for 60% of your stretch. We're not looking to force anything. You can have a prop under your head here. I don't have mine handy, but you can have a prop here. Stay for a couple more breaths. And then releasing. Rolling back to your belly. Let's come back up into Sphinx Pose again. So rather than switching ends, I'm going to stay here so that you can see what this pose looks like from the back, in case you weren't sure what was happening with that back arm. So I'm going to begin to slide down, extending my right arm straight out from my shoulder. And then bending the left knee, so it's making the shape of a like 90 degrees. And just breathing into the hip flexors to start. Then we're going to begin to roll towards this right hand. So I'm going to lift up, place my left hand in front of me to help support me. And bringing that stretch to the front of that arm. So my option is to bring this top leg back behind me. And we're opening only 60% of stretchability of that right front of the shoulder.
go ahead and roll back onto the belly. Come back into Sphinx Pose. Lengthen the spine. Turn your head from side to side. And so now we're going to do another shoulder stretch, but it's going to be um, the outside back of the shoulder this time. So I think I'll do the left arm first so that you can see. So I'm bringing my right hand up a little further. I'm going to take my left hand and slide it underneath. Bring my hand underneath my head and rest down on my head. So this is really stretching the outer shoulder. Breathing into this. Sometimes stay too long because this can be intense for some people if you're very tight in this part of the shoulder. So let's slowly come back into our space pose. And then we're going to do the second side. So bringing that left arm a little bit forward and then sliding the right arm under. A few more breaths here. And then we're slowly rising back up, coming into our Sphinx Pose, lengthening the spine, softening our shoulders. And then lower all the way down. Bring your hands under your shoulders and we're going to press up and back into Child's Pose. So this can be extended child's pose, and this can have knees wide if you wish. For some of you, this is going to feel good. For some of you, you might want to bend your elbows, point your fingertips up to the sky. Some of you might want to bring your palms to the top of your shoulders. Maybe even a little shoulder massage here would be nice. You bend your elbows, release your hands down. We're going to rise up into tabletop. We're going to do just a couple of rounds of cat-cow to relieve any tensions in the spine. So inhaling, we look up, we allow the front body to open. And the exhale, we release the head, release the tail, press up out of the shoulders. And just slowly make that transition. Oscillating between these two movements. We're not looking for strength here, we're just looking for some mobility, some movement. And then we'll bring the spine into some side movements as you look towards your right hip. Come back to center and look towards your left hip. Just moving from side to side here. Coming back to center, we're going to do shoulder thread and needle very similar to what we just did lying down. You have the option to keep your knees parallel or bring your foot out to the side. We've done this quite a few times in our movement practice. 
We're going to make this nice and slow and easy. Let's start with the right hand reaching up to the sky. Get a nice stretch here. And slowly exhale, bringing your head and shoulder down to the mat. We're going to stay for a couple of breaths. One more breath. Really slowly drag that arm up, reach it to the sky, float it down to the mat, keep the leg where it is. Let's do the other arm, getting into the fascia, stretching a little bit differently. So inhaling up into your twist. And exhale, slowly slide it through, bring your ear and your shoulder down. Again, we're going to stay for a couple of breaths this time, rather than moving in and out like we do in our more active classes. Close your eyes. Breathe into it. So we're getting a bit of release in some of the fascia, as well as in that inner thigh, possibly. Your next inhale, slide the arm up, reach up to the sky, and float it down. Draw the knee in, let's move to our second side. So again, option to keep your knees where they are or extend that left leg out. Let's start with the left, actually let's start with the right hand. So inhale, reach to the sky, nice and slow with the breath and the movement. Exhale, slide that hand towards your toes. Ear and shoulder come down. Staying for three breaths. Inhale, breath. And slide the hand up. Come into our twist. And exhale, release the hand down. Let's do the second arm. So the left arm reaches up to the sky. Nice big breath here. And the exhale, we slide it down. Ear and shoulder come down. Stay for three breaths here. Your next inhale, slowly rising up, reaching to the sky. And let the exhale float it down as we draw that knee in. We're going to come to a seat now. Actually, if you'd like to come into down dog and just stretch that out, you're more than welcome to do a nice, slow, easy dog. Perhaps you want to take child's pose here. So just lifting up, sending the hips up. You can stretch into the backs of the legs. And just make it be nice and easy, nice and soft, not looking for super strength, perfect alignment. Just a nice gentle inversion to release. And then if you take it down dog, drop to your knees, we're going to come to a seat. And we did this little twist the other day, and I find it to be kind of nice and gentle. A nice releasing in here, especially if you're feeling a lot of tension in the neck and shoulders. You've been really busy working from home on computer or helping kids with schooling on computer online. Or I've been doing a lot of outdoor work. So we're going to start with knees bent and your feet out to your left side. And I'm just laying my top shin in the arch of my bottom foot. And then bringing the hands over to the right side, so on the outside of my right leg. And so your hands can be right here as we begin to spin the torso towards the right. Let your head move towards the right. And then your hand can be on that knee, 
or just on the floor or beside you, whatever is most comfortable for you. A gentle twisting here. Nothing forced. And then slowly bring your gaze to look over your front shoulder. And then we're going to begin to drop the head, keeping the chin level towards the uh, sorry, towards the left side. So it's almost like we're lifting the head up and away from that right shoulder. It's almost like we're creating a little tiny bit of a back bend. So we almost kind of lean towards the left side, even though we're twisted towards the right. Feeling a nice release or gentle stretch in those scalene muscles in the neck and down into the chest and the shoulder, which we've been working with quite a bit already. Let's take one more breath here. And then come back to upright, unwind. Bring your hands to both knees. Let's just roll the shoulders a little bit. Turn your head from side to side. And then let's just switch sides. So bringing your left uh, foot down, letting your shin rest in that left arch. And then we're going to begin our twist towards the left side. So you can just have your hands on either side as we begin to twist the torso, torso to the left. You might have your hand on your knee as well. So we'll start by looking um, the same direction you were twisting towards the left. And then simply turn your head to gaze over that right shoulder. And then if it feels okay for your neck, you begin to Lean the top of the head towards the right, keeping the chin relatively level and almost creating a bit of a back bend here. So we're twisting to the left and a little bit of a back bend opening to the right. So now again, the scalenes in the front of the chest and the front of the shoulder. You'll feel it here if you're very tight. Again, we're looking for 60% stretch, not your maximum. And then slowly come back to neutral. Unwind your twist. Bring both hands here. You should have done this on the other side, but if you want to round your back a little bit, a little bit of a twist to your right. And then release both legs out in front of you. Bring your hands to support you here. I think I should turn this way. And you might want a folded, rolled up blanket here again. So here, I'm going to place this under your knees, which helps to support the hamstrings again if you're really tight. So we're just going to come into a very gentle forward fold, slowly making our way here until you begin to feel resistance, wherever that is for you. Now once you feel resistance, using your hands as support or your elbows, if your elbows are on the floor, we're gonna to begin to allow the spine to round, which again, normally we don't do this in our active practice, but in this more passive practice, we're going to allow that to happen. Again, we're only looking for 60% of our maximum stretch here. We're not forcing, we're just allowing. And slowly walking your way back up. 
You can keep this prop under your knee if you wish. We're going to come into Janir Sursasana. Sorry, we're going to start with the right leg straight and the left leg bending, bringing the foot to the inside of the thigh. So again, you can have this prop under your knee for support. If you don't need it, that's okay too. So we're going to start by rotating our body towards the straight leg. The same as we did in our forward fold. We're just going to begin to fold forward. Actually, let's start here first. Lengthen up nice and tall with your hands supporting you here. And this might be your genus or sasana right here. This could be where you're at. See if you can release your hands and stay nice and tall. And if you can, then you might think about beginning to fold forward. Using your hands as kind of your brakes here. When you meet resistance, we're going to, again, this is not what we normally do in our active practice, but we're going to allow the spine to round here a little bit. And then again, hands on your brakes so that you can soften into the Breathe evenly and deeply here. And then using your hands, you begin to walk it up. Release that leg out in front of you. Maybe if you're stiff in your knees like me, you might want to massage that leg a little bit before we move into our second side. Being kind to yourself. And then bend the right knee. And again, now you can have your rolled up blanket under that knee if you wish. Sit up nice and tall and straight. Use your hands behind you to support you. Lengthening your spine. And if it's appropriate for you, you might begin to hinge at the hip crease and begin to fold forward over that front leg. When you meet resistance, wherever that is for you, use your hands as your brakes to support you. Let the spine around. Stay with slow, steady breath. Not trying to get anywhere in particular, just finding that place where you have sensation without pushing, but not so far that the nervous system begins to fire up and clench. We're trying to calm the nervous system and release, not activate. So don't push it. Slowly walk your way up. Release both legs out in front of you, with or without your rolled up blanket under your under your knees, whatever is most comfortable for you. And now we're going to go into a little bit of a hip opener. So either uh, supine, laying on your back, thread the needle, or pigeon pose. So thread the needle looks like this. Crossing the ankle over the shin and drawing that leg in. And you might use a strap around your shin to do that. So the stretch is going to be on the leg where the ankle is on your knee. That's where we're feeling the stretch here. And the other side looks like this from this angle. So you can do that variation. We'll start with the right leg. So if you're doing this variation, the right ankle comes onto the knee and the foot is flexed, which means the foot is drawing towards the knee rather than just hanging out there as you draw that leg in. The other variation is pigeon pose, which um, you can start this from tabletop or down dog. 
So we're just drawing that right knee forward, walking the back leg back into your pigeon. So you can use your blanket under your hip here. We're going to move into sleeping pigeon. You can flex this foot, the right foot as well, as you're moving into pigeon. Keeping the spine long as you walk your way down. Maybe stacking fists or using a cushion block or bolster under your forehead. Maybe you come all the way down to your mat. Again, we're looking for 60% stretch, so we're not forcing using your props or maybe moving it to thread the needle rather than pigeon if you're feeling really tight today. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So whichever variation you're doing, we're targeting the same place, which is the outer right hip. And when you're in threaded needle, keeping your um, tailbone down rather than lifting it up, will bring a little more stretch into that target area. If you're really tight, you might just keep that left foot down and press this right knee away from you. That's still a stretch there. You might also be up against the wall and have that foot on the wall or on a block or a book. And that might give you enough stretch. We've got a couple more breaths wherever you're at with this particular pose, pigeon or threaded needle. Here in Pigeon, you'll begin to walk the hands up. You can either step into Downward Facing Dog or come back into Tabletop. Those of you in Thread the Needle, as I am, bring your foot down, ground both feet down. And then we're simply going to move it to the left side. So those of you moving from Tabletop or Down Dog, bring the left knee forward. Those of you in Thread the Needle, Left foot comes onto the knee and we press that left knee away from us and draw the right knee in. So again, you might have this right foot can be on the wall. It could be on a block. You can pretend I have a block there. Or maybe just keeping that foot on the floor is enough of a stretch. For those of you who are reaching to your thigh or your shin, Remember to try to keep the tailbone or the sacrum down on the floor rather than lifting it up. And if you press that down, it brings a little more stretch into that left hip. Those of you in pigeon, support your forehead with stacked fists, a block, a cushion, a bolster, or the mat. Whatever is appropriate for your body this day, in this moment. Few more breaths here. Here in Pigeon, slowly begin walking your way up. Those of us that thread the needle, release that right foot down. Release both feet down. If you're moving out of Pigeon into Down Dog or uh, Tabletop, you're going to make your way down to a seat and onto your back to meet us on your back with the knees bent, soles of the feet grounded. Taking a couple breaths here. Just noticing the breath, noticing the body. And then you can use a prop here, bolster, block, roll up blanket. We're going to move into a supported bridge. So lifting the hips up, slide into prop underneath whatever that is for you. And just having it under the sacrum. So not into the waist, but under the bony part of the back of your pelvis. Then just resting here in supported bridge. And then we're going to bend the knees and reach the soles of the feet to the sky here. 
If for whatever reason this is uncomfortable for you, you can ground your feet back down and stay here and support and bridge. Or do one leg at a time if that feels better for you. But we want this to be comfortable and just a little bit of a gentle inversion. This can be very relaxing for the nervous system. And also really good for the circulation system, giving the heart a rest. Nice breaths here. Closing your eyes. Relaxing your arms. Finding that spot where your legs can just hover over your hips without much effort. Few more breaths here. And then slowly bending the knees. Soles of the feet release to the floor. And just pause here for a moment before you lift your hips to remove your prop. And then just slide your prop out from underneath you, let the hips come down, and pause here once again. Walk your feet to the outside edges of your mat, and we're just going to let the knees drop over to the left, and let your head roll away. Slowly bring your knees to center, and exhale. Let the knees drop towards the right. You might feel a little opening in hip flexors and side body here if you're tight in the psoas. Inhale to center, exhale to the left. Inhale to center, exhale to the right. We're going to do one more time to each side, slow, gentle releasing. The inhale brings us to center. The exhale, we drop to the left. Nice deep belly breaths will help to release any tension in the hip flexors. And inhale, center. Exhale to the right for our last one. Again, nice deep belly breaths into that left side body, left hip flexor. Inhale, center. Take a moment's pause. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Maybe you want to rock from side to side. And then moving into a final Shavasana, extending your legs. Now, if you want to use your blanket as props, you could place it under your knees. You could place it under your head if it's not too tall. And you can also place it under your upper back, just by your armpits. And release down like this. So take a position that feels just really nice and supportive and nourishing for you, whatever that might look like for you. And take a few moments to get set up in that position. Maybe you need a blanket to cover up with. Maybe you need a sweater or your socks as I do. 
but take a couple moments to settle and be comfortable where you can remain in stillness for the next little while. Make any last minute adjustments you need to make. Maybe you need to do a little wiggle from side to side. Lift your legs, your knees up and jiggle them from top to bottom. Roll your hands back and forth. And then just let the arms and the legs settle. Let your feet drop open however is most comfortable for you. Roll your head from left to right. Maybe you want a blanket under the back of your head as well. Maybe you have a whole stash of blankets. And then take a nice deep inhale. Pause at the top of your inhale. And slowly sigh the breath out. Two more breaths like that. Nice deep inhale. Pause. And slowly exhale all the breath out. One more inhale. Slowly release. Extending that exhale. And now just release all effort of the breath. Allow that breath to become effortless. Begin to bring awareness to the sounds around you in your space, starting with distant sounds, whatever you can hear in the distance, maybe even outside of your house or your room, wherever you're practicing. We tend to always move outwards with our awareness. And now we're going to slowly begin to draw our awareness inwards to whatever sounds you might hear in the immediate room that you are in. And then continue drawing your awareness inwards to the sounds coming from your own body. The sound of the air moving in and out of your nostrils. Perhaps you can even hear the sound or sense the sound of your own heartbeat. Continue drawing your awareness inwards by bringing your sense of awareness to the outer perimeter of your body, where your skin meets the atmosphere. Awareness to the sensation of your clothes on your skin Perhaps the, the blanket resting on your body. The temperature of the air on your skin around you. Awareness to that space of where your perimeter of your body meets the atmosphere all around you. That junction point where your body ends and the other begins. Then begin to bring your awareness to your breath. To the flow of air as it enters your nostrils, 
travels down into your lungs. And the warmth of the air as it leaves your body and mingles with the atmosphere around you. And then begin to count the breath. Taking an inhale, and as you exhale, count 10. And each exhale, with your slow, even breath, moving down one more number. Slowly moving towards zero with each breath. And each breath, counting down, releasing, surrendering just a little bit more. And as you near zero, Feeling more and more relaxed with each exhale, more and more effortless. Your body more and more weighted. You reach zero with your exhales. Begin to move your awareness around the body. No particular effort, just bringing your awareness to each body part as I name it, without thinking, without any purpose. Bring your awareness to that space between your eyebrows, the center of your forehead. And imagine a blue point of light there. A point of light, the center of your forehead. Center of your throat. Feel or see a blue point of light in the center of your throat. center of your right shoulder, the blue point of light. Center of your right elbow, the point of light. Center of your right wrist. Center of your right palm. Tip of your right thumb, a blue point of light. Your index finger, your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky finger. Points of light at the tips of all of your fingers on your right hand. Your right wrist, your right elbow, your right shoulder, blue points of light. Center of your throat. Center of your left shoulder, a blue point of light. Center of your left elbow. Center of your left wrist, blue points of light. Center of your left palm, the tip of your left thumb, your index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. Points of light, the tips of all of your fingers. 
your left wrist, your left elbow, your left shoulder, points of light, center of your chest, a blue point of light, your left chest, a point of light, center of your chest, your right chest, a blue point of light, center of your chest, your belly center, center of your pelvis, a blue point of light, your right hip, point of light, your right knee, your right ankle, the tips of all five of your right toes, points of light, center of your right ankle, your right knee, your right hip, points of light, center of your pelvis, center of your left hip, your right knee, your right ankle, points of light. Tips of all five of your toes on your left foot, points of light. Left ankle, left knee, left hip, points of light. Center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, points of light. Center of your throat, center of your forehead, points of light. Now see all those points of light in your body all at once. Like the stars of a constellation. Feel your body heavy, heavy heavy, sinking into the earth, body heavy, weighted, held by gravity. Feel your body light, weightless, light as a feather, Feel your body so light, as though you are floating up to the ceiling, floating higher and higher, weightless, effortless. See yourself above the roof of the building you are in, looking down at your body resting on the floor on your mouth. Look to the horizon and see weightless clouds lit up by the sun. Allow yourself to merge with those clouds, becoming the clouds as you come in contact with them light, effortless, floating, merging with the sky above you. And your points of light in your body becoming stars, points of light in the sky. becoming one with the universe.
effortless, floating, light. And to come back to your body, resting on the floor on your mat. Maintaining that sense of lightness and effortless. See the space around your body as healing golden light, healing energy surrounding your body. As you inhale, that healing light energy moves into your body. And as you exhale, spreading it throughout every cell in your body. Moving back out into the atmosphere around you. Stay here in this healing light and energy for the next few moments. Slowly bring your awareness back into your body as you begin to deepen your breath. And breathe gentle movements to the tips of your thumbs. You bring your thumb to touch the tips of each of your fingers on both hands. Perhaps rolling your wrists. Perhaps reaching your arms overhead to bring a stretch to the body. Maybe pointing your toes. And when you're ready, moving into fetal position, allowing yourself to transition here. Pausing, maintaining the effortlessness And then slowly, when you're ready, pressing your way up to your seat. Bring your hands to your heart center. Eyes closed. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And slowly, let your eyes begin to flutter open. Coming back into your space. Namaste.